Hi, I'm doing something different today and showing you through someone else's nature journals. This is a really special story. Mary Trull is a real local hero for nature. She walked 91 miles in Devon Wildlife Trust Nature Reserves in her 91st year, raising over £7,000 for the Trust. She also nature journaled the whole process. Mary's journals show how anyone, however artistic you feel that you are, can find a way to get involved in nature journaling and to make a difference for nature. I hope that she inspires you as much as she inspired me. Now let's go over to our chat together at the beautiful Seaglass Gallery in Limston. What gave you the inspiration to start this project? So why did you decide to start this wonderful nature well, journaling? I was uh, very concerned about, and have been for years, about the decline of um, uh, wildlife and yeah. lots of other things too. Yeah. But I also think that I want it to be positive. A lot of good things are happening. Yes. A lot is happening. And I realised I didn't know anything about reserves very much or Devon Wildlife, um, but um, that um, the Devon Wildlife people were actually positively doing things. Uh, and so then I, I went to see them and then... They were very kind and said, yes, right. So I said, well, I'll be sponsored. And so I will, I'm 91, so I might as well, uh, I'd like to walk 91 miles, but only count the mileage while I'm in a reserve. And so, um, uh, therefore, you know, we can make a little bit for Devon Wildlife Trust as well. And so these very kind people, lovely people, Steve Hussey and... Um, and uh, Harry Barton, I said, right. And Steve said, OK, well, well I'll help take around. He, he was the manager of the whole 50. There are now 60, actually, 60 of them. But, uh, and so that's what it is. And we drove all over Devon, hither and yon. And it, while I was in the reserve, only while I was in the reserve, I counted up the mileage, you see. And so I got my 91 miles, and then we were able to... Um, spread the gospel because I thought if we, you know, if you have uh, what's it sponsorship, it spreads it around, doesn't it? You yeah. spreads around what you're trying to do. So when about. when was this? This so you were ninety one. Which year was it? Twenty nineteen. So it was before the pandemic broke out. It was before the, before the pandemic. That. Yes, yeah. thank God. Yes. Yeah. And then some of my family and some friends, I told people in. Um, in the village, this is what I was doing. Oh, maybe come with you. Maybe you do it. <laughs> and several, several people uh, volunteered to take me. Um, with, not not with Steve, just they did their homework, very good. <laughs> and uh, my family, of course, Sophie and Andrew, and Edmund and Cedria. And my poor Daniel was very very ill and didn't survive. But. Um, <sighs> That uh, I had his this positive thing. Yeah. His last words to me would be, "Mum, be positive, positive, positive." That's so I'm beautiful. Being positive. That's beautiful. <laughs> so you went and did your walks, and that was uh, sponsored for the wildlife trusts. Yes. For, what, for Devon Wildlife. For Devon Trust. Wildlife Trust. When did you decide to do this part? Was this part of what you said you were going to well, do? Or I didn't sort of see, but I thought, well. <laughs> Having done those walks and things, I ought to make a record of it. Yeah. Because it's going to be more helpful, perhaps, to get the idea across of what is happening um, if I don't write it down. And so I got those books and then I thought, well, I'm not, not much of an artist. <laughs> I, I, uh, but I, I cut it out because I collect a lot of um, wildlife magazines and that sort of yeah. thing. And I wrote, I've written about each one and my experiences yes. and who I was with and that sort of thing. Not just um, about uh, the wildlife, but uh, people send me lovely cards and I just kept them all. And so then you've got a reference, go big, so a big of, stack. A big stack. It takes quite a long time, you see, finding the right pictures. They're uh, a lovely... Uh, a friend of my daughter, Sarah, took me round to some of the difficult ones. and um, Because, of course, they're very remote, some of them. Yes. 
And uh, I, I would never have been able to find them with sat. <laughs> no. So, uh, it was lovely. And all the time I was talking to Steve or to the people kindly taking me about what we were doing or where we were going or... So he would take you around and would talk a bit about the nature that was there. That's right. Did he talk about the um, the conservation problems and things like like this about how, why they needed to create? Well, in some and... in some places, yes. Like uh, the the rest, well, the restoration of places. Like you see, the, there's a terrible, disastrous way we've treated um, heathlands. Yeah. Where where there's some rare. Creatures. I mean, there's a wonderful thing at Bavi, Bavi Heath. You know, this little um, heath potter. What, what's wasp. that? A wasp? Oh, that's not one. I've never heard makes, of that. Well, it makes a beautiful little Grecian urn. <laughs> wow. Beautiful little Grecian urn. I'll show you Does what it, come to it. It just it makes it out of the out mud. Of, uh, out of uh, uh, mud. Yeah. There. And then it puts its fleece uh, in there. Tucks it in, yeah. stuffs it with. It it doesn't kill the caterpillars. It um, injects them, paralyzes them, and stuffs that on top, <laughs> and then covers it up, and off it goes. And then when wow. the chrysalis, when the um, larva uh, changes into a chrysalis, it's got plenty to eat. Yeah. Because then it brings the, wakes up the caterpillars and eats them. So you went here. Yes, well, my stock pools. My stock pools is our local one, but this is one that we go to quite frequently. Yeah. And that is Steve Hussey. I was telling oh, you. Oh, the, the, this here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I put a picture. That's a very him. nice picture. Well, I I wrote to him and said I want to have a nice picture of him. <laughs> <laughs> and I've met each time. So I, I do make little remarks about about people or why they've come or well I was just saying thank you to him I wouldn't have started the thing at all. Sometimes you see yeah. I include a, bro- a brochure. Uh, which are these are your photographs these ones. And these are um, various people I mean like that one is me looking at a, a lizard which is just nipped off <laughs> out, out of the way. Um, my son took these um, uh, caterpillars, mm, cinnabar caterpillars. Uh, cinnabar, are, yeah. they're cinnabar caterpillars. So you've got a frog there. there. And so these are your photos. And these again. are the pools, the bicep pool. But and here you've taken one of the photos from your magazines because this is a butterfly that you saw yes. when you were there. So you've yes. taken the photo from the magazine and stuck I take that the in. I've taken photos from the yeah. magazine, and sometimes it isn't that I've always seen them. Or that I've been told that they are they there. there. Yeah. Because I was sponsored, I told you, I have to prove that I really was <laughs> in the Yeah, reserve, you went, yeah. Not just looking at the... Um, and, and this is all the blurb, you see, about it. So what sort of things do you write in here? Then? Can you read it? Yes, yeah. Mm. So you've written the date at the top here. You've written the location. Yes. And who you were with. Yeah. And then you've written a little diary in here. That's it, that's it. So just that's a little it, bit of what you exactly saw. exactly what it is, yes. What we saw, what we did. So it isn't just that I'm talking about the thing that I'm seeing, but also mm-hmm. the the um, emotional side of, you know, Very important. whether we had fun or whether we didn't. Or Now this one, again, nice, kind friends. And the, the, this that's the sort of thing I put, you see. Some people, can you read that? Yes. Some people think that visiting nature reserves is all plain sailing. The fun and interest of it is that it isn't. They are quite mistaken, nearly a tumble. So there's me yes. nearly falling. My Being friend caught. Uh, Judy behind me catching me <laughs> and her husband who has a bit of a wry sense of humour taking a film of it. But I've said <laughs> here, you see, uh, thank you Judy for saving me, but... <laughs> Oh, that's... Also, also, Andy, for showing, you see, that it, it isn't all plain sailing. Yeah. <laughs> so, so those sort of things... The reality. Because it's a diary, it's not. Yeah, that's... And so, though, that's, that's a high kiln quarry. You only have to get permission to do that. I went with that. It's a great horseshoe bat, you know, and it's um, quite eerie. A vast, vast... Uh, 
cave with um, what I put at the end. I can understand why Conan Doyle wrote his books about the um, the Dartmoor because, I mean, this is the greater horseshoe about, and I've got much more information. I couldn't always fit it on about the endangered greater horseshoe about. So more. you're keeping your... Um they're always having a little a little note on each page. I try a few to, scrapbook yes. pictures, a few photographs and yes, leaflets. And sometimes and sometimes a lot of the photographs could be, have more information uh, put on them. And then this is uh, the Turbury, Clay Hyden Turbury. A Turbury is a, a um, Turbury. it's when they had peat rights, isn't it? Yes, that's it. Here yeah. I see. And sometimes I, if I, if there's a good um, I, something I can cut out like that. Okay, hadn't it? was used by local people, grazed their cattle, and uh, also cut peat from the side to use as fuel to heat the homes. Yeah. Ancient writers at the root of the name Turbury, and then it came into decline. And now, of course, it's a wonderful nature reserve. Have you always been interested in nature from when you were little? Yes, you yes, always. yes, yes, yeah. very much so, yes. My <laughs> father, of course, was very interested, but he was killed, sadly, when I was seven. And I had a nanny who was wonderful. But those were the days when we didn't think it. We took it all for granted, very mm. much so, although not completely. And I was at school in um, Evacuator, I was taking charge in Longleat. Oh, really? Uh, yes, so that, you... that was where I was evacuated there. Well, of course, that was a wonderful parkland. <laughs> is that before they made the, the park, the, is it a safari uh, thing there, Longley? Oh, yeah, long from, yes. Yeah, <laughs> before that, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we just helped a lot on the farms and that sort of thing, helping with the farm and the gardening and recreating wildlife places without... Mm. It's, mm, for making food. Well, it's, it's a balance, isn't it? Just trying to make food in a way that isn't damaging, or is less damaging. That's it. Yes, yeah. I regret my generation is very guilty, really, quite frankly. You know, putting pesticides and all the rest of it. That's ter- terrible. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. There were more. There was a lot more insect life, wasn't there, um, before oh, the the um, insecticide revolution and. Massive. And, you know, even in my lifetime, I remember um, when I was younger being able to hear cuckoos regularly, yes. always hearing the cuckoos. And, you know, I'd know that spring had come when I heard the cuckoos and I've barely heard any... Emsworthy um, Ma is where a lot of cuckoos come. That's where they go now. Yes. And yeah. there's a big, apparently a big green caterpillar of some sort, I can't remember what he's called. And that is why they still come up there. It's a beautiful place if you were ever up on... I've, you have not been there. No. Um, That's on Dartmoor, is it? On Dartmoor, yes. Yep. And uh, cuckoo, absolute fields, oceans of bluebells. Um, and and it's, uh, there's a mile, there's peat, there's sphagnum moss, there's um, wonderful uh, lichen. And, uh, mm. and when I took my daughter-in-law up she's crazy about fungus she's french <laughs> <laughs> she's foliage yeah. <laughs> emsworthy mar has got um, a very ancient wall and it was at once a, far, a farm um, and it's amazing how a tree has that's a tree part of a tree trunk you know, how they grow in the wall. And my son was taking a, a little photograph of, because it's also, it's a mire, and, so, and very, very sacred uh, uh, mm-hmm. sphagnum moss uh, with peat, peat. Yeah. But um, and Edmund, was, my son was with me, he was taking a photograph <laughs> of the pond here. And, and uh, um, dragonfly sat on his head. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. And I couldn't. I hadn't got a camera of it. This is a, a such a very um, reserved reserve <laughs> that it only look, we only look at it through, not inside it, but just through. Oh, it's in a park. Right. Uh, 
Warmerafen, and it had, I explained, all the natural... I think that it's good to have a few yeah. places like that, isn't it, where you, the people yes. don't come in and you just That's leave exactly it alone a little I bit. Said at the yeah. end. It's rather yeah. fun with that there are still places which you can't see everything. People don't um, understand. When we talk about wilding, people think we just leave the place to go wild. But, you know, we're, uh, we're dominant creatures. We are dominant. Nettles are dominant. Mm. Brambles are dominant. And have to be uh, controlled. Yeah. And that is what uh, the, the, every, there's a warden on every, in every reserve. Mm -hmm. There's also, it's very important to have grazing. It keeps the balance. Yeah. The Although I, I do think that it's good for some areas to be left to wild. The Undercliffs is actually a great example of that. It's somewhere where nature has, for the most part, in certain areas, been left to take over. And there's some parts of it where, because it was old estates like Pinhay and Bindon, um, there was a lot of exotic trees in yes. the reserve. Holm oak, particularly, things like holm oak and, and, and other exotics. Oh, yeah. But leaving it alone and letting it settle into this world environment has made an amazing place in the Undercliffs. So I think in some areas, allowing a little bit of wilding to happen is great. It yes. depends on the idea of the reserve, doesn't it? Like whether they want to have a heathland, a pristine heathland yes. or chalk It depends what you mean by wilding, let's face it. Yes. I mean, for instance, gorse is vital for stone chats, yep. babies. Because, yes. Because um, nest in there is a warm atmosphere and also the prickles keep other creatures you know, um, magpies and all the rest of it. Yeah. Made some pink toys. This is a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> that is about my my artistic um, idea taught him from children. Um, but it's nice. Is... It's nice to have little decorations like that. Well, it makes it fun, doesn't it? Yeah. But because this is a restored um, railway junction. Oh, I see. There so it's an old line. There's a old jungle junction yeah. and there's another one. So that's I'm why the train is here, and because it used to be. That's why I've made the train. Oh, New England wood. Lots of, lots of birds, New England wood. It's rather interesting here, you see. I went with my niece, and she's always been quite an adventurous. And this tree had fallen over the river. The river. <laughs> I knew the moment she saw it, she'd be walking across it. <laughs> I do things like that so as well. I'm a bit. I like said that. I would walk across it as well. I really liked what you said earlier about the importance of um, making it positive. So responding yes. to the biodiversity crisis that we yes. we have. Yes. But making doing that in a way that. It inspires people rather than making them <laughs> miserable. <laughs> because I'm, try, I'm trying to. I mean, yeah. I never, I don't look at a, a news. It was a absolute doom and gloom. Yeah. It's rubbish. And, uh, and I do write fierce letters to things, people, because we have to face the fact that we have, there is declining, there is global warming, and we've made it. And we've, but I mean, there's a lot of good things happening. It was interesting when I put the letter into our uh, village paper, we call the Herald, um, and sort of said, this is what, a challenge from Devon Wildlife Trust, anybody interested? Masses of people doing little things, big things. Uh, well, some friends of ours have bought a little field and and all sorts of things. They've got a wild meadow there, they've planted some little orchards, they've probably got the children to help them with the, the hedges, <laughs> to create a hedge, and a little pond, and absolutely everything. And in, in a couple of years, yeah. they've done it. Wildlife responds. It, it does. This is lovely. Part of the... Oh, well, that's my. Yeah. That's about my artistic effort. <laughs> <laughs> that's <is> beautiful. <laughs> Which I enjoy. Enjoy. I've got some pens, and there's um, again. This again is it's the very first 
Well, I did, you see. With, ah, so um, this was your first one? This was the first one, yes. <laughs> Dunsford. Well, that was the very first day with Steve Hussey. Oh, and I didn't know Steve, and he didn't know me. He didn't <laughs> know how uh, far I could walk or how quickly. Or, and so this was the first one. Uh, I think my son happened to be staying with us. Uh, it goes on a bit here. Um, there's that oh, one. Got the... Um Dippers. Oh yes, a dipper. That's all done, Swiss. This is a nice idea, just well, word, interesting daffodil. things that come that up. Things it's famous for, the wonderful wild daffodils, oh, what yes. I call Wordsworthian daffodils. I love you? this photo. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because I've finished. <laughs> the end.